What is up, Nuggets? It's your boy, Killer Pizza, here with a brand new video for you rascals and rap scallions out there. Hopefully everybody's had a great weekend. It's crazy to me that the weekend is almost over already. It went by way too damn fast. And I'll say, despite me wearing the same exact clothes that I wore in yesterday's video, I am recording this on a separate day, on Sunday, the day that it's coming out. And, you know, sorry for the late upload. I gotta say, you know, to be quite honest, your boy just slept in and it was great. And I've been kind of dealing with a bit of a dilemma today as well. It turns out there are some stray kittens behind my garage living back there. And they are the cutest cats in the world. If you guys know me, you know I'm a cat person. And I want to bring them in so bad. There's four of them. But we have a pretty old dog in the house right now that's unfortunately going to have to be put down in a couple of weeks. And I just don't know how she would handle all these little kittens. It just might be too much. Plus, my cat, Benny, you know, uh, Benny the Cat, or, uh, Jet Regis, you know, he's getting a little up there in age too. And I just don't know how he would handle these cats. But... I might actually go get some like kitten food and whatnot. I don't know. I know you're not supposed to feed strays, but my heart's growing three three sizes this day, just like the Grinch. You know, I love me uh, some animals. They're great, especially cats. But anyways, with that being said, let's hop right into the video at hand. This is a Q&A Volume 3, the third one I've done. I've always had a lot of fun with these, and I really appreciate the questions you guys sent me. I have a dozen total, and I feel like I mentioned this in a lot of videos, too, uh, anyone watching this for the first time that aren't too familiar, I'm also a professional wrestler out of Michigan, so I would say half of these questions are uh, wrestling related and the other half are movie related. So I'm going to do my best to answer these to my highest ability. So <laughs> whatever the hell that means. Anyways, on to the first question. These ones were sent from the community tab, if that's what you call it. Who are your favorite... Okay, Liam4009. Who are your favorite actors and why? Now, this could go in a big range of answers. You know, I grew up on a lot of comedy movies, so I'm a big fan of Bill Murray, obviously, is the man, uh, Woody Harrelson, Chris Farley, Adam Sandler. I know he's not the best actor, but I grew up on a lot of his movies. And obviously, action movies with Sylvester Stallone, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, I'm a big fan of Paul Rudd. I like a lot of his movies. I actually watched Ghost, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire last night. Really good. I really enjoyed that movie. But, uh, yeah, then I'd say probably if I had to pick my, you know, I got to throw Tom Atkins in there too, you know, so many great actors out there. But if I had to say my very favorite, it would be Robert De Niro or Al Pacino are up there, two of my favorite actors. I just like the performances they do, a lot of the movies they've been in. But my favorite actor of all time, I'm going to go with Kurt Russell. Now, John Carpenter being my favorite director of all time, I love all the work he's done uh, with him, and I love the movie Overboard, I grew up on that one, and then I like a lot of the work that he did with Quentin Tarantino as well, I just like his range, I think he can be funny, uh, be the butt of the joke, be taken serious as a badass, you know, just, you know, even uh, Overboard, you know, just, you know, I love him, I mean, he's probably got to be my favorite actor if I had to pick just one, but... That was actually a much more difficult question than I thought it would be. But anyways, thank you for the question. Then we have Ali DiMatti. What movies are you most looking forward to for the rest of 2024? Now, I'll say one that's out right now that I haven't gotten a chance to see is Garfield. I really want to see that movie. I don't know if I'm going to wait for it to come out on physical media or not. But one I'm not going to wait to come out on physical media is Maxine. I'm probably going to go to the theaters and watch that next week. I'm super, super excited for that one. Then obviously Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I love Beetlejuice, and I know we're all a little worried on how this is going to turn out with that movie. But I got faith it'll be pretty good, Tim Burton. So uh, I'm excited for that. But the bell of the ball. I cannot wait for Terrifier 3. I love Terrifier 2. Terrifier 1 is just okay, but Terrifier 2 is one of the greatest horror movies that has come out in recent time. And I heard they're going to go even harder with this. It's going to be even more gory. I have to be there open at night in the theater. I cannot wait for Terrifier 2. Or Terrifier 3. And I, I still want that damn Terrifier 2 VHS from Walmart. I'm jealous of anybody that can find that. But anyways, thank you for the question. The next one we have is from Backpack Matt. When he first asked this, I said, wow, this is a deep question when I seen this. What is the biggest lie you have ever told yourself? Like, wow, that, that's a pretty heavy question. And I, I gave this one a little thought. And I think the biggest lie I have ever told myself would probably be that everything is going to be okay in times when I was in a bad place or, you know what I mean? When, when things aren't going your way and you tell yourself that 
to try to feel better or give yourself strength and inspiration or whatnot. That's I know it's kind of a generic answer in a way, but it was a pretty hard question to answer, and I think that's uh, the best one I can come up with. All right, let's see. Now we have Ball5884. Who would you have on your Survivor Series team? Brett, he has Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Mr. Perfect, Rick Rude, Flair. That is an amazing list. Five of the greatest wrestlers of all time. This is difficult because I could pick my favorites, but let's come up with a squad. I'm going to go with Bret Hart. It's going to be team captain, the excellence of execution. And then uh, let's get Roddy Piper in there. Kind of a brawl or a bit of a wild card. Then we need some size. Size with speed. So I'm going to throw Yokozuna on the team as well. He's going to be the enforcer. And maybe another big guy too. But one that can move a little well as well. I'm going to say like 90, 97, 98. 97 through 2001 version of Kane. So, and then after that, let me get a high flyer in there. I'm going to pick, I would say RVD. But I'll pick someone that's also very technical. Not that RVD isn't. I'm going to say Eddie Guerrero. So that is my Survivor Series team. Off the This one was off the top of my head right here. Bret Hart, Roddy Piper, Eddie Guerrero, Kane, and Yokozuna. That's my Survivor Series team. Feels weird not to throw Lesnar in there, you know. It's a scary man. You guys see Alex Pereira last night at uh, UFC 303 with the head kick knockout? I don't know if you guys follow that. That dude's a scary guy. Okay, let's see. Well, this is a two-part question, but one of them I answered already. Oh, and this is uh, Liam4009 again. I, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. I'm, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. L-I-A-M-B, 4009. Who is your favorite actors and why also? What creeps you out the most in horror movies? So I don't really get creeped out very often with horror movies. You know, I think that's a misconception with a lot of people. Like, when they know I'm really into horror, it's like... And if you guys are big horror fans, you know as well. Like, when you watch so much, it's hard to get scared of stuff you know it's more just entertaining but i would say like if i was sitting in one of those inner tubes with my feet in the water watching jaws it would definitely scare me but i'd say more so stuff that like deals in like religion or exorcism or like ghosts and stuff like it mostly exorcism with religion like it's just kind of eerie to me or, or maybe stuff with aliens like a fire in the sky really creeped me out but uh also things that creep me out that aren't just like the tone of the movie itself like, when someone, when like, throat slits, that's kind of, like, ugh, it's kind of gross to me. And then, uh, like, the fingernails. You ever seen the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre when the guy has his hand on the wall getting pulled in the basement and his fingers rip off? Or an X when uh, Jenna Ortega gets her hand bashed in trying to get out of the basement? Like, that type of stuff is, like, ugh, you know, that is hard to watch. So I'm not sure if I answered that the best I could, but I tried, damn it. Okay. Was hell? What's the most disturbing movie you've seen? Do you have any horror hot takes? Uh, I would say a Siberian film is the most disturbing movie I've ever seen. That or like Necromatic 1 or 2 will fuck you up. You know, those are pretty nasty. Yeah, definitely Siberian film was the most disturbing movie I've ever seen. That is some terrible things happen in that movie. As for like a horror hot take, I would say... Well, for one, I like the newest Hellraiser and the newest Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But my biggest hot take, I would say, is I prefer the 1990 remake of Night of the Living Dead over the original. That's my hot take. Okay, we have two, six more questions. This is from my buddy Ray. He says, will Roberto Cruz ever get to hold the IWE Imperial Wrestling Heavyweight Championship? And what are your plans after wrestling? So thank you for the question. I have been working for Imperial Wrestling Entertainment for eight years, and I have yet to hold the heavyweight title. Granted, I've been a tag team wrestler the majority of my time there, uh, four-time tag team champions, the current tag team champions as well. And I'll just say this. If you don't get into this business with the goals to be the heavyweight champion, you shouldn't be in the business. That is something I definitely want to get done before I hang up my boots. I want to be the heavyweight champion for my home promotion. And if I'm being quite honest, my most humble opinion, I know I'm good enough to do so. So timing is everything. Next time I get the opportunity, I'm going to try to take that belt home with me. And uh, when it comes to what I plan on doing after wrestling, you know, I'm, I'm pretty glad I have this platform here of like YouTube and everything. I think I'll probably follow up, continue this and uh, 
maybe get the podcast going again, things like that. I think I'm actually going to lean more into filmmaking at that point. It's been a dream of mine. You know, I have some scripts I've written with a couple different friends. Always wanted to direct the movie. Uh, be hands-on with everything, really, you know. You know, and I don't even have to direct it, necessarily. I wouldn't mind uh, getting involved. I wouldn't really want to be an actor, necessarily. I think it would be fun, but I'd probably rather do directing, writing, cinematography, work with the practical effects, stuff like that. So I think getting more into movies, you know, and expanding that way, you know. Okay, now, from my boy, Chap Daddy, J.J. Hughes. This is my tag team partner, one half of the Excess Express and Super Shogun Wrestling. He says, greatest memory in your career. So it's hard for me to say that just because my career isn't over yet. But there's so many things, like being able to work for so many different like good causes, doing like benefit shows for charities. We, we've, we've done shows for autism, uh, breast cancer, you know, just all, all types of stuff. So that's something I'm most proud of. Uh, you know, just entertaining people and giving them the long-lasting memories, even as a villain. That's up there. You know, there's certain matches, like, I had a tag team title ladder match, the Cream Street Mafia versus Harley Legal. That was one of my highlights of my career. Winning the MWO heavyweight title against my best friend Nick Baker, Jack Terran at that company in a Iron Man match. That's got to be up there. There was a night I was in a one-night tournament and wrestled four times in one night, making it to the finals. Uh, and I was a, a heel, and the whole crowd got behind me, and I kind of turned tweener through the show and then got to main event in a triple threat match. And one of the participants I faced off was was against uh, a friend of mine who passed away, Pure Fury, Jeff Klaus. So that that's it for sure. That's one of the best memories. Plus just all the friendships, everything on the road, you know. And even teaming up with J.J. Hughes of the Excess Express. That's been a highlight of my career so far, one of the best memories. All just the fun shenanigans we've done. So, But those are some of the memories. I think the best memory has yet to come yet because my career is still going. I think I'm still in my prime. Now, pun the psych. Top five favorite punk records in entirety. So I would say No Use for a Name, uh, the Feel Good Record of the Year, Do or Die by Dropkick Murphys, uh, and Out Come the Wolves by Rancid, mm, Static Age by The Misfits, and Suffer by Bad Religion. That would be my top five favorite records. Oh, actually, take out Suffer. What am I thinking? My favorite album of all time, the best punk rock album of all time, London Calling by The Clash. So London Calling by The Clash, Static Age by The Misfits, Do or Die by uh, Dropkick Murphys, Out Come the Wolves by Rancid, and uh, Feel Good Record of the Year by No Use for a Name. Michael Rhoda, if you could create a punk festival with five bands, who would you have play? So I gave this one some thought. I think I would want some smaller bands to open up. So I would go with Death Lens, Bad Cop, Bad Cop. Then I'd probably throw in The Descendants. And then my, my main acts would be Bad Religion and No Effects. That would be the five I would have. And I think they would all kind of gel pretty well together for a festival. Two more questions. From Brian, my buddy Brian from Stage Combat Network. If you guys are interested in watching some local Michigan wrestling, he has his own channel. He's got a lot of my matches on there, Stage Combat Network. Really good guy here, so go subscribe to his channel. And he asks, who is on your Mount Rushmore of pro wrestlers? So I think if I had to do, like, the Mount Rushmore, it would almost have to be, like, Hogan, Andre, Stone Cold, Flair. But, like, for me, with my favorites, I would do Bret Hart, Flair, Stone Cold, mmm... Man, man, this is tough. Uh, an Undertaker, maybe? Yeah, that's what I'll go with, at least for right now. I don't want to get stuck on this too long. They're actually Hogan, Bret Hart, Flair. How else did I say? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. I think that, you know, <laughs> I'm going to move on. So, sorry. You know, <laughs> any mixture of those, you know, those are some of my favorites. And last but not least, Sean Silver, one of the guys who helped train me in professional wrestling. Uh, I love this question. What is your favorite kill in any horror movie and why? So this was difficult to think of because I'm a huge fan of practical effects. 
obviously there's a lot like in Friday the 13th, uh, the guy in the wheelchair taking the machete to the head, the guy doing the handstand, getting cut straight down the middle, the uh, sleeping bag kill, then even in Nightmare Nightmare uh, on Elm Street, the scene where she's getting killed and, and ripped all through the ceiling, bleeding, and you know, but nothing, it doesn't show anything killing her because it's happening in her dreams. That's pretty brutal. Uh, Welcome to Primetime Bitch is a classic. A lot of really good kills, but I think I got the right answer. Captain Rhodes in Day of the Dead is my all-time favorite kill in a movie. Just the build-up, though I think he was a more likable character than he has credit for. I think he was in the right the whole time. That's a hot take of mine, actually, right there, that Captain Rhodes wasn't wrong. He just was kind of a prick about things. But the whole build-up of his character... And you kind of want to see him get his. And he's been shot by Bubs. Uh, and he's like limping down the hallway trying to get away. And when he opens that door, that shot of all the zombies reaching through, then his reaction, ah, 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 it's perfect. And then when they tear him down, take him down and tear his body into pieces, it's so fucking badass. And then him saying, choke on him, choke on him. I really wish I could have met him before he passed away. Uh, that's got to be my favorite kill in any horror movie. I know I'm going to forget some. There's so many. I could do a list like that one time, you know, my fa my top favorite kills, because there's a lot out there. But that would have to be my favorite kill. But anyways, uh, thank you guys for all the questions. I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully I've answered everything to your guys' liking. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, maybe we'll do another one of these sometimes. I had a lot of fun with this. I appreciate all the questions. Once again, guys, you guys fucking rule. If you made it this far into the video, I appreciate you guys. If you're not yet subscribed, feel free to do so if you want. Uh, but other than that, you know, just appreciate you guys watching and supporting the channel after all these years. I love talking movies with all of you guys. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Blood, guts, gore. I'll check you guys next time.